What's up, everybody? It's Marcus D'Angelo, and we are back for another episode of the Hacksaw Hour. And of course, we could never do it without the man himself, WWE Hall of Famer, Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Jim, what's going on, brother? Well, brother, let's do it. Come on, baby. Ho! <laughs> I know I, I watch you uh, with Jake's show and Teddy's show. It's like waking somebody up out of a nap. <laughs> oh, Hacksaw, we're going to start with a hole and get the whole thing rolling. You know, as Brody Rob told me years ago, if you're going to be a wrestler, be a wrestler, you know. <laughs> so I, back in the day, I used to do those celebrity golf tournaments, you know, and they would introduce so-and-so New York Yankees, hello, hello. So-and-so Washington Redskins, hello, hello. Professional wrestler, hello. Everybody's silverware and go fly there. What the hell? You know, especially <laughs> in a golf tournament, right? They <laughs> and I can't golf at all, you know. <laughs> so everybody there's just giving a little wave and a hello. Yeah, and everybody yeah. else is bringing you, but yeah, Brody told me that when you give an autograph, give an autograph. You know, I guess nowadays, like I heard Roman Reigns does R R. Yep, I've heard that. Imagine standing in line for two hours and paying two hundred dollars and getting an R R. I don't think I'd be real happy. <laughs> yeah, all the collectors are not too happy with it, man. But yeah, I used to do a lot of golf tournaments back in the day, even though I couldn't golf for the shit, man. You know, <laughs> and I'd hit a ball, and they they um, they'd have to use like a celebrity drive one time, you know. And I hit the ball, and they all be like, "Hacksaw, great shot, great shot, great shot." And then they hit, they land, land over next to me, they'd be like, "Shit." <laughs> <laughs> hey, but well, hey now, man, but, uh, yeah, it, but always raise a lot of money. And, and I usually get a group of guys that wanted to have fun, you know, they were drinking and partying, you know, playing bumper cars with a golf cart and stuff, you know. It was <laughs> tough if you get with a group of guys that are serious, though, you're like, shit. <laughs> Especially if they don't know wrestling. They're like, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Big yes, guy, sir. I hope by this guy, he'll, he'll, he'll knock, the, knock the shit out of the ball. <laughs> <laughs> now, when you get a hold of one, I have to imagine you would send it flying. Uh, right, brother. Are right, you kidding? I don't think I've ever got a hold of one that went straight anyway. <laughs> you know, yeah, I always sweat when we get down and the, the fairway goes uh, parallel to a road. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. And I've been known to hit a few houses. Why would you buy a house? And a golf course, especially there with you. Duggan out there playing four. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey Jim, you mentioned it. Uh, you know, you aren't just giving any uh, little autographs. Your your uh, your signature is really nice. You write out hacksaw Jim yeah. Duggan. It's a great Jake, Jake's the same way. Teddy, our generation of guys appreciate people standing in line and, and getting an autograph. And of course, I just saw Jake uh, this past weekend. We were up in New York City. Yes. And it's always fun. My daughter, Celia, came up from Orlando. We stayed right there in Hell's Kitchen, right down in the heart of New York City. And uh, we went to Times Square for a little while. You know, it, I tell you, it's not like the old days. You're like this, you know. <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> hey. Right by the rent-a-car county, when you fly into LaGuardia, they have a rent-a-car counter. And they have the rent a gun counter, you know, so you can pick up a piece when you fly in. You know? got to be able to protect yourself. Oh, brother. and there was a lot of uh, a lot of homeless folks. Uh, it wasn't as pleasant as the old days in New York City. And uh, we had the show at um, the uh, Javits Center, and it was they sold out all four days, four day Comic Con. And the agent that brought us in was one of the Power Rangers, uh, Jake the Snake Roberts. <laughs> Uh, oh, the guy who played Hercules, Kevin Sarb Sarbo, Sorbo, at the yeah. Hercules TV show, and myself. So that was a unique collection of people there in a row, right? What a crew! <laughs> Man, we did okay business. You know, New York is almost so big, it's hard to find people. And uh, just just uh, and then this past weekend, that was two weekends ago, I did uh, just Greenville, South Carolina. And uh, we did great business up there. It was myself, Kane, and Lex Luger. Wow. And, uh, so Kane was there. He sits there in the mask the whole time. You know, he's got his mask on. Miserable. So Kane gets up and goes to lunch. <laughs> 
guy, you get my humor, brother. You know my stuff. The guy sitting next to me is the agent that brought us in, just a regular guy. And people come up and they go, is Kane here? I said, yeah, this is Kane without his mask. And they're like, oh, Kane, hello. <laughs> <laughs> All right, write him an autograph, brother. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you mentioned it. You were there uh, in Greenville. You were in New York. And next stop, it looks like it's the Motor City from Motor City Comic Con. Is that right, Jim? Or do you have something? Yeah, this up in Detroit. Yeah, I think we're heading up to Motor City Comic Con, man. And that's a good one. Uh, uh, Tony uh, Tony Hunter is the agent that puts that one on. That's He's a real stand-up guy. I believe, I believe the Godfather... Or uh, Papa, Papa Shango, he's always Papa to me. Uh, we'll, we'll be there. I get along good with Papa. We both like to shoot. You know, he's a big gun guy. So actually for uh, WrestleMania, I'm flying out early out to uh, Vegas to go out and go shoot with him one day. Show him exactly how it's done. <laughs> well, absolutely. Uh, you, you've got some experience with the handgun and whatnot. You've got a whole collection there, don't you? Yeah, I do. I, I usually show one off. I forgot to bring one up because I got something actually much, much better to show off this time, brother. All right. Let's You're have not going to believe this. I wonder if I should just go ahead and start with the best. No, I think I'll work my way up. You know, just recently, it was a South Carolina State uh, Fair. You know, our state fair is a great state fair. Don't miss it. Don't even be late. <laughs> Deborah Duggan, Look four second-place ribbons at the State Fair for baking. Very, very good. All different kinds of pies and, and cakes. Two first-place ribbons. All right. There you go. And for the first time since, I think, 2020, maybe, 2019, best of show. Whoa, Deborah Duggan, man. Yes. What was that one for? The best that was show. for Fudge with Nuts. Fudge with Nuts. <laughs> I tell you, I go down, I help Deborah drop off the stuff at the state fair, you know, and I got my arms full of cakes and pies because he brings a whole bunch of stuff. He has a lot of entries. I mean, that's just a few. She had a lot of entries. And I try to have easier Royal Rumbles, man. <laughs> <laughs> Them old ladies come in. Boom, I'm just standing in line, ma'am. I'm sorry. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> Get color in a line like off that. Boy, you're looking, what do you got there? Is that a pie? Is that an apple pie? I, I don't know. I'm just carrying it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> don't yell at me, lady. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, you know, we go down, and it's fun to go down to the state fair, of course, uh, and we enjoy the, the, the fair. I enjoy county fair. I just enjoy being around folks and stuff like that, you know, the chickens and ducks, because I got chickens and ducks and stuff. But uh, go in and find her uh, her, uh, her food or her baked good, and then with a ribbon on it, oh, we get pictures and everything. Yeah, it's, it's, it makes it a lot of fun. That is so cool and awesome uh, that Deborah is such a great uh, cook, baker. Oh, I don't uh, know. She, got a, she first did it when she turned 40 down in uh, – we were living in Florida. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. I'll take a drink too. Yeah, good. <laughs> what are you drinking, though, brother? I got Monster Energy. <laughs> Whoa, Jeff. that Jack Daniels, man. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it was. Uh, no, no, you don't, brother. Your liver will tell you. <laughs> <laughs> But when she turned 40, she was we're living down in Florida, and then she entered her first uh, uh, contest at the, at the county fair, and she was also in the bikini contest. <laughs> so I don't know which one I was happier with. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, hard to say. <laughs> what yeah. were you doing there? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She, she looked good up there, guys. Yeah, yeah. These people would go, this is like, oh, this is my wife. And they're like, no, really. No, that's really my wife. <laughs> hey, pal, that's her. Uh, so, Jim, I'll tell you what. If my wife could uh, bake like that, I think I'd be about four hundred pounds. What are you doing? Oh, I was, I was, yeah, I was three. Well, I got sloppy, you know. But I wrestled mainly at two seventy, two eighty. That's right. Was there? But when I wore that singlet, that was one of the reasons I put the singlet on. I was gotten so heavy. I was up there around three twelve. Mm. That was my heaviest. But also, that was when I had my biggest bench when I was the heaviest. So size, size equals strength. Right. So the bigger you are, the more you can put up. What was your max bench at that time? Uh, 505. 
Holy smokes, Jim. Yeah, but, I mean, and I wasn't a strong guy. There was a lot of guys. Dino was pushing a lot. Uh, the Road Warriors pushed a lot. Of course, all the gas guys, they're all gone, though. You know? That's true. Those guys that had great, big, huge muscles and little tiny hands and wrists. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so that's they're that's like, a they're big approach. guy. I'm like, no, no. You, know? <laughs> you, can, you can still push <laughs> When you grab weight. Andre's fingers like this. <laughs> <laughs> Now that's a big guy. <laughs> and one thing about those big muscle heads, you know, weights don't fight back. Hacksaw Jim Duggan does. Oh, right. oh! USA! <laughs> I don't know we if had you were in the in USA and in New York and that Kevin Sorbo guy. I was like, what? what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just do your thing over never there. Right? Yeah, you never be but, um, oh, well, well, speaking of showing stuff, I got to show you this while we're up there. Of course, you've seen the uh, major bendies came out, right? Yes. How cool are those? They have three different ones. They got the mid south one with Amazing. the black trunks. Uh, that was probably uh, the my high, uh, my toughest part of my career when I was working hard and chopping meat, and my character changed over time. Yeah, where you know I had the stars and stripes. The one time I painted my face. At SummerSlam, they made a, a wrestling figure. I should have painted my face every other week. What the hell? Different colors. And we were every just week. talking about the single it, you know. There it <laughs> you is. Can't see the abs in that one. <laughs> <laughs> They're there, there though. Those kids, Matt Cardona, right? And yep. uh, and Brian Myers. My, and look what they just came up with, brother. At least I just got them anyway. Look at that. The they are great, aren't guys. they? Yeah, big rubber guys. They call them. And I guess you can open them up and put them back in the deal. And they make old hacks so they got me buffed up. And again, they have a second one with the uh, painted face and stuff. Man, so, those are uh, cool. Yeah, they came out great. Yeah, I came right. But all oh, those guys are, are great guys. Congratulations to them. You know, got out of the business. Smart move. Or I guess they're still in the business. But obviously, this is their main business, man. They're making some money with that stuff. And the yeah. fans love it, man. The fans enjoy it. Yes. And, and they always come up. Actually, I got your doll. I said, they're not dolls. They're action <laughs> figures. It's a throwback to your old <laughs> LJN action figures, folks. Uh, so if you don't have a Hacksaw Jim Duggan LJN, they're harder to get your hands on nowadays. They're more and more expensive. This is a great substitute. So go check out yeah. the big rubber guys. About the same size and everything. Yep. Uh, yep. And, uh. Yeah, no, very cool. Of course, the, the original LJNs are almost the antiques, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you find them in the antique store, you're out down, uh, you're going through the country somewhere, right down by the old plow and <laughs> old Coca-Cola side. Look at this, an LJN figure. If you have one in the original package, it's worth a small fortune nowadays, my goodness. Yeah, I got a couple of them picked up over the years, man. Very cool, Jim. Yeah, they're very nice. Yeah. Now we get, I get, the, uh, I don't know how many action figures made o over the years, you know, and, which is cool. They, back in the day, they put your picture on anything, you know. <laughs> the only thing I got hot about was this toilet seat cover, and I'm like, well, <laughs> <laughs> at least it wasn't toilet paper. I, I drew the line there. I'm like, brother, come on. <laughs> Jake went for it. <laughs> oh yeah, Jake doesn't care. Whatever. I, I don't think he like that. Cheryl was there. Nice to see Cheryl. Uh, of course, Deborah and Celia. So like old home week up in New York. Well, look, guys, if you cannot get out to see Jim uh, live at one of the shows to get his autograph, there's another option. You've got to go to realhacksawduggan.com. He's got some merchandise there under the shop tab. And boy, let me tell you, there's some good stuff, including some of these uh, major bendies like he just showed. So get yeah. over there, have a look, because, uh, man, it's a, what a really great shop you've got there. Well, thank you. Yeah, it just came out, and uh, a lot of the stuff was we're still kind of working out the kinks and everything. And and as you know, uh, we're really struggling with our Facebook. Uh, somebody was able to shut down my Facebook. A lot of folks don't know what happened. I was up in New York, and people were like, "Actually, we didn't know if you were sick. Uh, you know, you know what happened to you." But uh, just some individual was able to shut down my Facebook. We're struggling to get it back up. So it's hard to get that shop going. But also the biography is very cool because it's really finally my biography. <laughs> I look at Wikipedia, I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> Where are they coming up with this shit? Yeah, who came up with that stuff? 
And it, 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 it all kinds of interesting facts. My high school stuff growing up in Glens Falls, my college stuff playing ball at SMU, who's doing good this year. I think they're number 20 in the AP poll. They're playing well, SMU. Right. Uh, a little bit of pro ball, and of course, my 40 years in the ring. And, uh, and like I tell everybody, it's been a good run in the ring. You know, everybody sees that dark side of the ring. They see, you know, Jake, God bless him. They see Scott Hall. You know, they hear Matt Bourne. They hear all the negative stories. They can do a bright side of the ring, you know, and they do interview with Tito Santana or, or Jerry Sags. Or, you know, I've been with Deborah for 40 years. I never had to go to rehab for booze or drugs. You know, I can't throw no stones. I did a whole lot of both. <laughs> I just never got had that addictive type personality, you know. There's no felony arrest. <laughs> Probably the best known misdemeanor in the history of wrestling, you know. <laughs> but uh, it's been a great business for me. It's 70 years old, almost 71. I travel the world. We've got a, a European tour i got to talk to you about coming up in January up in the uh, UK. Wow. Uh, at 70 years old, signing autographs. How can you bitch? Man, a hell of a career, 40 years, and still out there making the towns, as they say, uh, not only Motor City Con, but as you said, the European Tour, and a few more dates here in 2024. So if you want to catch up with what's going on with Jim, make sure you follow him on his social media. Right now it's Twitter and Instagram. We are going to get that Facebook back up and running, so stay tuned, folks. Uh, we'll, we'll get it. Right now it's a suspension uh, due to somebody, I don't know, I guess lodging a complaint or saying it, it was a fake page. And or I'm something. not political at all. I mean, I... When it was cut off, I was just showing old uh, football contracts from my, my football days. But whatever happened, happened. And obviously, it's uh, it hurt, hurting us pretty good because, our, our you know, like you said, you can't find our shop or nothing or anything. So, yeah, we're, we're working on it. Hopefully, we'll get it straight. But I know I my will. ex, too. You know, at one point, it was tw uh, Twitter. I had 300,000 folks on Twitter, and somebody wiped out my Twitter. But anyway, I don't want to talk about that because I get negative when I think about that kind of stuff. Got to stay positive, you know, brother. That's, that's you know, right. Let's go positive. And if you guys you're want talking it. about being on the road and stuff, you know, and my sisters are like, you know, geez, you're up in New but it's kind of neat. People go, what you do this weekend? We went up to New York City. <laughs> it was great, you know, and now with Deborah and Celia, I just kind of follow the crowd. You know, they got the Uber coming, you know, which way we go? Okay, yeah. <laughs> got the hotel taken care of you know uh, just go along and, uh, and, and it's always fun to be in New York City the hustle and bustle uh, the, the, the village gate you know I've been there a bunch but I'm still like holy shit <laughs> <laughs> I'm hey where's my wallet go wait a minute <laughs> <laughs> that's what they want they want to see you looking yeah, up no yeah. you from Glens Falls how can you tell <laughs> I'm from a small town like you, and I live here in Pittsburgh. Anytime I drive down to, into the city, I'm the same way where I'm like, man, look at these buildings. It's incredible. My wife's the like, The only time on. I got a lot of attention, one time I went, oh. <laughs> they all surround you. I'm glad you got it, brother. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> See, I got it. Um, Kenny would be going. Huh? <laughs> Well, look, uh, one last thing before we get into our notes this week, and that's it. Oh, Again, we got to work. Holy smokes. Oh, yeah, we got we got some fan questions for you this week, Jim. But before we get them, guys, if you cannot get out there to see Jim in person, and if you're looking for a cool holiday gift, not only do, do you have Hacksaw's shop, but you've got to get over to Cameo.com and uh, check out Jim's page there because Jim does personalized videos just for you. And you want to talk oh, about Oh, I got a big Santa thing. hat, and, of course, it goes right down the way, you know, Ho, ho, ho! Uh, how perfect is that guy? Old Santa saw here. <laughs> I, I did that. I think, oh, I got a picture. There's a picture. I did a commercial shot with WWF back in the day. I had the Santa suit on, and I had two kids on my lap. Mm -hmm. The boy came to the co uh, convention up in New York and showed up. His dad worked uh, at, at Stanford, and he had, he's obviously a grown man now. So we took a picture. He just sat on my lap this time, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> but his son but did, right? Not there was a lot of that going on in New York, but I couldn't, my leg couldn't hold him. But uh, <laughs> yeah, we got a picture together. It was kind of neat. The kid, we was a little kid in that Christmas. I was Santa saw with a hat and everything. Unbelievable. But yeah, good way to do a cameo. They're kind of hurting too with the loss of my Facebook. 
but it doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me one. <laughs> We're going to get it back, Jim. Boy, uh, it's old hacksaw is ready to go out there and fight for it. <laughs> Should I pull a hamstring? Well, actually, there's a whole other story there, but <laughs> I want to find my buddy up, Mike Knox, down there from Florida. I don't know Mike is a big independent. He works a lot uh, with a, uh, the different shows, I can't think. But a good I talent. Mike Knox, yeah. You know Mike? Yeah. He's a yeah. good guy. I like Mike. How cool. Well, yeah, the young uh, kid, yeah. Well, guys, uh, we are going to answer your questions this oh, week. Another hack uh, mailbag. Oh, sorry. It is our 25th episode, so we've made it. Uh, oh, do I get a bonus, in, brother? Or what the yeah, hell is sure. it? Sure. Yeah, certainly, it's in the mail, actually. Don't worry. Right by with <laughs> your WWF royalty check. <laughs> and, uh, guys, you, you brought some great questions. Again, if you have future questions, you can drop them on social media or uh hit us up on youtube right here on youtube uh in our communities tab you can you can drop questions for jim but first one we've got this week is from harold and uh harold asks there's recent news that bob Backlund is suffering from dementia i just heard that myself jim uh any memories of mr Backlund? uh not too much uh he was doing the uh the howdy duty thing when i first came into the uh wwf as big jim duggan uh, so obviously him and Bruno and, you know, they were, I'm sitting in the back, back corner of the dressing room, you know, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I do have what kind of, a, doesn't have a whole lot to do with Bob, except that was him and, uh, Bruno were the main event at Boston Garden, right? So you can imagine the Boston Garden, like Jam Pack, Bruno and, and Backlund. And my buddy, Neil McPhillips, God bless him, was in my wedding, high school friend, passed away. Uh, Dean Dubois, another high school friend of myself, I never, I didn't work very often. We're all going to go to Key, Key West after the show in Boston. We're going to drive to Key West. And, uh, you know, because I only, I only work like three or four times a month. So after the Boston Garden. So I've never been to the Boston Garden before as a wrestler to find the backstage entrance. <laughs> which is like a maze. And so now we're driving around. We kept pet traffic is thick. You can't, you know, how it is. You're trying to get in. Finally, find the back entrance. We get in. I'm late as can be. Man, we open the, the trunk. I grab my bag. We go running in. Oh, other brother we went with us was John Kelly, right? Dubois, McPhillips, and Kelly. Boom, I grab my bag. I run in. Uh, Arnie Scone is the uh, agent. He's like, Jesus, Doug, you're the first match of late. You're, you're, brand, you're green as hell. What the hell? Have a little respect for the business. Get your ass through dress and get out. You're getting ready to go on. Yeah, you so I rush in there. I sit down. I pull open my bag. All my Florida stuff. Oh, no. <laughs> I dropped the wrong bag. <laughs> oh, no. Oh my God! So I go running out. I grab the one of the uh, security guys. I said, "Brother, you got to page John Kelly. He goes we're in Boston. <laughs> I'll have fifty John Kelly show up. What the <laughs> hell are you talking about, paging John Kelly?" <laughs> but long story short, I found McPhillips. He was a big tall guy. I put on him in the crowd. Got my bag and. Went out there and, and wrestled, but that yeah, that's probably as, as much action I had with with Bob. Uh, he was always seemed like a, a pleasant guy. He was always nice to me, you know. Always yeah, he seemed like a good guy. I heard about that dimension too, and surprisingly, more guys aren't having that kind of trouble. You know, uh, the NFL is very aware of concussions and stuff, and I think especially nowadays, the kids seem to take pride in. I saw poor Seamus. He's all cut and his back is all bruised and shit. I'm like, brother, it's pro wrestling. MMA is down the way. You know, yeah, man. Dial it back, dude. You're not yeah. supposed to hurt each other. That's not the, the idea. Is supposed to make it look like that. You feel like this. That's You're it. pro. And uh, now kids are leaning with their head. I think that, that was Benoit's generation. Uh, him and uh, Malenko and and the Guerrero, that whole crew. You go to hit him with a chair. My generation, me and Teddy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get the hand up, man. And they were like. <laughs> yeah, and they wanted to put the big dent in the chair and stuff. I never understood. Man, what the hell? You're not going to convince somebody. Well, oh, that's real. No. <laughs> you know, or the, it's pro wrestling. Put on a good show. Don't hurt each other. 
If you have your MMA, of course, I told you I've been to it was a master of ceremony at the MMA fight up in Montreal. Holy smokes. Backstage is like being in a car wreck. <laughs> Mr. Duggan, I won. <laughs> Are you sure, kid? Yeah, good kid. Good for you, young fella. Let me go out there. Ho! <laughs> but uh, yeah, hard to argue with success. And, of course, Seamus is, you know, one of the most successful guys out there. And a nice guy, too. He was a good friend of Arnie Skolan. And uh, any good friend of Arnie Skolan. And, of course, Arnie's gone. Arnie, Arnie, uh, uh, Tim White, and uh, Andre were all very close. Uh, next up, we've got Matt K, who asks, do you have any Hi, stories about Jake scaring people backstage or on the road with his snake? <laughs> um, well, you know, the deal with the the, uh, the, the snake and macho, right? Uh, they were, they were going to do the cobra. Right. You know, they had the, uh, the python, and now they're going to do the, this is kind of a long story, okay? Oh, go ahead. Yeah, okay, brother. <laughs> we have the two-hour show. <laughs> anyway, we're all back in the dressing room. We're all playing cards, you know, and uh, the, uh, Albert, the snake guy, is going to bring the cobra in. So we're all playing cards. Albert comes in. He's got the bag. I got the I got the cobra. I got the cobra. Everybody's playing cards. Yeah, the cobra smobra. Jen. <laughs> he throws the cobra out of the bag. The darn cobra stands up about three feet up in there. The hood comes out. Now everybody's like, oh, shit, Cobra. That's a Cobra. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, they're supposed to yeah. have all the poison, all the venom taken out of it, right? Mm -hmm. So now everybody's like, you know, Albert, put the damn Cobra back in the bag. Put it back in the bag. So Albert's, like, shaking his hand at the Cobra. Cobra's looking at his hand. He's shaking his hand. He reaches around with the other hand. Cobra goes, boom, and bites him right on the web of the hand. And there's a little trivia. It might come in handy down the road for you. Most snakes strike. Cobras bite and hang on. <laughs> so now you got this guy with a cobra on his hand, about an eight foot cobra. And he's going, ah! <laughs> <laughs> you want to talk about a battle royal? <laughs> Everybody's heading for the door at the same time. <laughs> and then Andre comes through, who is definitely afraid of snakes. He crushes everybody. So now everything closes, quiet is down, finally everything coming down. We come in the dressing room, and I look in the in the bathroom stall, and there I can see the boots, white boots, J Y D. <laughs> Dog is definitely afraid of snakes. He's been hiding in the bathroom this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I took my belt off. I threw it under the stall. Snake! <laughs> 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 so now you gotta ask DiBiase. DiBiase gets in on this. <clears throat> he goes over to Macho, and you know Macho's Macho, a right? good, great wrestler, all ahead of his time, one of the best all time, Mount Rushmore, all that stuff. But you know, like I said, he'd go into McDonald's, he'd be like, uh, "I'm a milkshake, fries, and a burger. Oh yeah!" You know, well, and Ted. Macho's sitting over there now. Teddy's in on the deal. He goes over to Macho. He goes, "You know, Mach." I'm not sure they can get all the poison out of a snake. Out of that <laughs> cobra, they can't get all that poison out. Oh, brother, what do you mean? What do you mean? They can't get all the poison. Oh no, they get 99.5 percent of the poison out of the snake. But there's a lot of times there's some poison left in the snake. Oh, brother! But now Macho goes over to Jake. This is how the show's going on. Right? We're getting close to the segment. And my, everybody's dressed. And Jake's like, oh, uh, my took it over now, Jake. I want the snake to bite you first. <laughs> Jake's like, what the hell are you talking about? We're getting ready to go on air. No, no. no. You know, my took him so funny. I want the snake to bite you first. And don't take no antidote or nothing. <laughs> <laughs> that might be a little bit. <laughs> but anyway, so Jake holds his arm out. You got to ask Jake. Jake will tell the story. Jake holds his arm out. The cobra looks at it. <laughs> you know, they don't let go, you know. Yeah. And, cobra, and Jake pulls the snake off, you know. All right, buddy. No antidote. <laughs> off 
Macho goes to the ring, they play Macho's music, right? Macho goes off to the ring, and he's now starting to play Jake's music. Jake takes the snake, he puts it in the bag, <laughs> gets to the gorilla position right before you go out to the curtain. He holds the bag up. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Pisses it off. Yeah, you can hear the snake in the bag growling. <laughs> I don't think snakes are supposed to growl. Probably not. <laughs> no, that snake was pissed. <laughs> they probably get out there. Jake throws the snake out of the bag. The snake like ah, flies across the ring. I was like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> Blood flying everywhere. <laughs> Great oh, television, I'll tell you. <laughs> Man, that was yeah, so I guess that's kind of scaring somebody with a snake. <laughs> Next up, we've got Bubba Baker, who asks, Hi, Bubba. You remember Scott Casey and Manny Fernandez from Houston, Texas? I, I guess I you want sure to do. Yeah, Cowboy Scott Casey and, and Manny. Yeah, I know those guys. Scott, uh, Scott and I weren't really close to Manny, not close at all. But I got a good Manny story. <clears throat> We're, uh, that's uh, Joe Blanchard's territory, San Antonio territory. And uh, you know, we were at a show somewhere, and we went out that night, and I just happened to be with Manny and a bunch of other wrestlers, and we happened to be at the library where there were naked women dancing on tables. But anyway, it was a nice library. And, uh, and anyway, there was a smudge at the library, and during the one of the one of the girls got in between it, and Manny, boom, popped the girl, punched the stripper. Ooh. Boom, stripper goes down, you know, and all the smudge, and boom, you know, we break it all up and everything, and we get the car and leave. So now, Tully Blanchard, who dad, Joe Blanchard, owned this, the, the territory, and just bought this beautiful white Cadillac Brome. You know, the big, huge, like your living room car, big caddy with white leather, white with a big thing on the front of it, the big emblem. Anyway, yeah. we're all out partying. And we go to like Waffle House, you know, late at night to get something to eat at two or three in the morning. And as we're getting out of the car, the girl from two weeks before sitting in the Waffle House with all her friends and her boyfriend. Oh. And she goes, there's the guy that punched me. The boyfriend goes up, he pulls the steak knife up off the table. He walks up outside, he goes, hey, boom, 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 boom. He plugs Manny four or five, six times pretty good, you know. Holy shit. <laughs> and runs off and takes off running. So now Manny's squirting pretty good. <laughs> Every time his heart beat, he's squirting. <laughs> squirting. <Gosh. laughs> he's squirting all over the side of uh, Tully's new car. And he's like, Tully? Tully, take me to the hospital. Take me to the hospital. So he's like, the ambulance is on the way. <laughs> <laughs> Not in the new car, brother. He didn't want to put him in that new caddy, man, squirting like that. The ambulance is right here. It's coming now. I can hear it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> Oh, wrestlers, man. baby. That's why I tell you, like Jake. I said, Jake's the most fun guy in the world you want to party with, but the last guy you want driving your getaway car. I'll tell you. <laughs> oh, Jake. no. <laughs> Slow driver? No, he take off. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, back in the day, I'd have Terry Gordy and Steve Williams ready. We'd be ready to go. Where's Jake? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's cool. That was never Jake's deal, though. That's cool. He gets um, the other way. I had, a, I had a gimmick on my head. We were up in New York. I took a little fall. I had a little juice up there. So I had a band aid on it, you know? And uh, so my daughter's taking a picture of the, the four of us. It's, it's Kevin Starbo, me, the Powerpuff guy, Powerpuff, Power Ranger guy. <laughs> And Jake, and Jake's old school. I got the band aid on. My daughter's getting ready to pay, take the picture. And Jake, go, that still hurt? <laughs> <laughs> my daughter came over the table. Oh, I don't know, honey. That's, <laughs> that means in the old days, man, when you get juice, you know, nobody used a band aid. You have a piece of white athletic tape stuck on your head. Right? <laughs> and the blood be seeping through it if you got good color. 
you know, and so you'd be on the airplane, you know, early in the morning, half asleep, and your your buddy be going by, he'd be like, oh, oh bro. <laughs> <laughs> And of course, the lady next to you be like this. <laughs> Blood starts pouring down your face. Just dripping a little bit. <laughs> Why athletic tape instead of a band? You'd think it would break I, back over. Well, we always had athletic tape. Everybody always had athletic tape. It's funny, though, if you look at all the old pictures, it's white tape. <laughs> it's true. Now that I'm it's thinking right, on it. It doesn't have to make sense, brother. You're a hacksaw <laughs> Duggan, but you carry a two-by-four. It should be two-by-four Duggan. <laughs> I just heard something about that, Jim, uh, and maybe you can confirm it. Somebody online was telling a story uh, that they had heard that the hacksaw name came from a, a kayfabe story that was told that you had like left your old lady, first wife, first girlfriend, whatever, and when you did, you couldn't figure out who was getting what, and you saw you saw everything that you owned in two, and that's how you got the hacksaw name. Now, is that just a fan story, or was that something? No, that no, that that's a hundred percent correct. Yes, that was something that happened. I, I right? chopped everything up with a hacksaw. Yes, sir. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Holy shit! No, was it? And on a full then? moon, I get real hairy too. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's some crazy stuff. There was a football player, Hacksaw Reynolds, who supposedly cut a car in half with a hacksaw, and that's how he he got his name. No, if I started off as Big Jim Duggan. Which you can find on Hacksaw Duggan highlights. My daughter Celia put all all my matches, the gorilla suit, everything on right. Hacksaw Duggan highlights. Go find but it. I folks. started off working. I worked uh, with Hogan on YouTube. You find it. Hacksaw du or J Big Jim Duggan versus Hulk Hogan. So I was Big Jim. Then I was a convict. When I went to Hawaii, then I came to Georgia, and I was uh, bet went back to Big Jim. Pensacola, I was wild man, Doug, and I wore fur with chains on it. But then when I went to San Antonio, we're just talking about Joe Blanchard. When I went to San Antonio, that's when I sat down with Bruiser Brody and Buck Robley at a kitchen table, <laughs> sitting around partaking, coming up with shit. They're like, how about this? How about that? How about action? Like, yeah, let's give that a shot, you know? And then a year, year, couple years later, the, the two by four came into play, but. Yeah, it, it works, man. And of course, me and Hacksaw Butchery, we had the Battle of the Hacksaws. But uh, yeah, I, people, my, the, the uh, kayfabe story is it's from my football days on my on the special team. I would go down, the, the wedge would come, and I'd hack my way through the wedge and tackle the ball carrier. Ah, there you go. A good story, anyway, you know. I think I like that. Imagine a wrestler better. telling a story. <laughs> it's a, I like that it's wrestler's that. honor. <laughs> uh we've got peter d up next he's got a great question he says hi hacksaw uh hi, the brother. heel is supposed to call the match does that mean that you have rarely called matches in the past 40 years what happens if the heel is really green no no uh yeah it's not always the heel that's that's a false yeah it's usually yeah the, uh, i like the baby face call the heel tell you the, the truth oh really but i always follow the, i, I Follow the formula. You know, you, the, the baby face comes out, boom, you get that initial pop, he shines, bing, boom, boom. The guy at the heels bouncing around, takes a bump or two out of the ring. The first two or three spots are, you know, uplifting. Get everybody up, boom, and then boom, the cutoff spot. You have the cutoff spot, heat, 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 hope spot, hope spot, stop. 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 Go home. And those those hope spots can be elaborate as you want, from jumping off this and doing that, bing the bing, or just duck the clothesline cross body. But you know, we're just where you have that ebb and flow. You want to tell a story. You want to orchestrate the people. And that's as we talked before. If you come out in the match before, he was off the hook. Boom! The place is blowing up. Bring them down. Get in the headlock, holding the headlock for a while. Let everybody get their cokes and sodas and shit, and sit down. And then build them up, Jim. What I, I know that you work babyface most of your career, but what would you say is the biggest trick to getting really good heat on somebody? I don't like the cheap heat at all, man. I don't like that when you get on the mic and say, "You fat, ugly, uneducated." No, they're your audience. These folks paid money to come here, you know. I mean, right. if you got to come out and, and and do that. 
I always like the I like the, the chicken heat, which I said I would never do. When I first started wrestling, you know, I'm right out of the NFL. Well, yeah, okay, he can beat me, but I'll never beg. I'm not going to beg ever in my career. Shit. <laughs> Six months later, don't hit me, please. Don't, oh, no. <laughs> don't hit me. That's the crowd. That, oh! <laughs> not shot at it. <laughs> yeah. You got to get heat in the ring, I think, you know. Uh, heat on you with your interviews. Uh, but if you have to insult the people, the cheap Pete doesn't work for me. Some guy to work for, yeah. What George about South? He does a he, he, he's made a career out of a guy that's very strong in the in the South down here. And does a lot of indie shows. Uh, you know, he made a career out of insulting people. But uh, each to their own. You know, that's when I tell young guys like yourself who think they're coming in, or like when I started. You know, you're going to hear a whole lot of shit from a whole lot of people. You know, yep. this might work for me, that might work for me, and kind of cherry pick from everybody. Now, what now, about remember, I tell kids 90%, 95% is gimmick. Everybody can take a backdrop, everybody can take an arm drag, everybody can jump off the top rope. Got to have something different to stand out, and the best way different to stand out is at the right gimmick at the right time, gimmick that you can relate to. And charisma, right? You know, go out there yeah. and engage the audience. Yeah, the the, uh, the best characters are just an extension of your personality. You know, mm -hmm. you just let a hacksaw is in here with me all the time. You know, and I just I let him out of the bag there, brother. You know, but uh, you guys got a joke. I said I wasn't going to be handsome Jimmy Duggan, but I tried different things. You know, like I said, you know, I tried Big Jim Duggan. I tried the uh, the convict. You know, the convict with the ears. <laughs> and I tried wild man. You know, feel free to change different gimmicks. Don't feel locked into one gimmick. But right. find something that really works for you and you feel comfortable with. That And facial expressions are so much more important than people realize. Absolutely. You got to be playing to the furthest people away in the audience, right? The yeah. People way up in the yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, it's now, a, what it's about... a, a tough business, man. That's, that's, that's why guys at the top of the WWF and AW, they're the best in the world. I mean, there's a million kids that want those few spots that those guys have. So those guys are up there, uh, you know, and the next generation will be the best because everybody, that's what I tell kids, what, there's 500 NFL ballplayers. There's through 250 NBA basketball players. There's 50 WWE wrestlers. It's television. It's more competitive than sports. And it's just not kids from America. You got kids from Japan, Australia, Europe. Everybody wants one of those spots. And that's why people, well, you guys are all good friends, aren't you? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. We're all real good friends. <laughs> <laughs> Wrestling handshake goes like this. Stab them in the back. <laughs> That's it's a pirate ship, right? It's kind of every it's, man for himself. That's a tough business. Um, what about when you're in the middle of a match getting heat on somebody, Jim? Is there some trick that you would use to kind of get effective heat? Is it just as simple as going slowly, or what do you do? Yeah, just take, you have your match, man. Yeah, hopefully all heat's effective. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, if you had one thing you could do more, uh, yeah, I, I, I like to. Just the, the web ebb and flow of the match. I like to have the hope spots and the cutoff spots and the hope spots. And you have as many of those as you want. But for, for just heat, you know, you know the, the basic stuff, a little choking. But you don't want to kill your ref neither, you know. A lot of people just kill the ref. You don't right. want to kill the ref, you know. The way he tells you to break, break. You know, I, I know that they're probably the WWE is stricter on that than they used to be. But the old day, you know, and it'd be a 10 count out of the ring, and the guy'd be going, one. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. uh, next up, we've got Costin, I think is how you say it. And yeah. they, who is the tougher opponent, Harley Race in the WWF or Vader in WCW? <laughs> Vader. Harley, I liked, I respected, and I admired, and I trusted 100% in the ring. Vader, 
I get my eye on. You know, I've I've heard Jake. Jake has said that the only person he's ever refused to work with was Vader because Vader had crushed his sternum at one point. Actually, legitimately cracked it during a match and was always really rough and stiff in the ring. Uh, was that your experience, or why didn't you trust Leon quite so much? Yeah, I knew he was. He had a reputation to be snug. If you watch any of our matches, oh, I had some good matches with him. Yeah, because I wasn't afraid of him. I wasn't backing down with him, and I was going to fight. I've been in the ring with Andre the Giant Vader. You don't scare me. <laughs> and I can handle my own. You know, I was 275. I can push and I can shoot. So, uh, yeah, so we had respectful matches. But again, I was watching him where hardly I could hang over any possible way and know he's not going to fall on my arm and break my arm or something silly, you know. Now, so, did you feel uh, like yeah. you. Did you feel like he was just reckless, or was he an asshole and trying to like hurt guys? I think he, yeah, he, Vader was a bully, and that's why when Orndorff kicked his ass, I think he was more embarrassed and hurt. To tell you the truth, because he was always been a tough, tough guy. And Orndorff, bubble, bubble, worked him over pretty good in flip flops. You know, he he, he hit him two or three times. Vader went down him like flip flop, flip flop, flip flop. flip flop. He put the flip flops to him. I don't know how effective that is. You know. <laughs> It'd probably be annoying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but uh, no. That's why I always said, like working with Ted. I always enjoyed working with Ted because I trusted him. He know if he potatoed me or I potatoed him, it wasn't intentional. It wasn't to see what he would do. It was an accident. Mm -hmm. You know, made a boom. If he hit me, well, shit. Yeah, you can believe I want to give him a receipt back. You ain't kidding. We'll go where you want to go with this, and. Uh, Mutual respect, and we, we had good matches. I've seen him just overpower guys. Brody was like that. If you didn't fight people, if you don't fight people back like that, bullies, the old high school deal. If you don't fight back the bully, then they're going to glom you. Yep. They'll never stop if you don't fight back. Yeah. And, you know, shit, this is one thing about that. Oh, yeah, yeah, here we go, baby. I don't know. <laughs> I fight people like, holy shit, who's he coming after? <laughs> I was I was kind of wide open back in the day. Were you there when uh, Orndorff put the the old yeah I was right clear? there man yeah I was in the and, uh, the whole deal started over an interview. He all uh, Vader had to do was get up and do an interview. You know he's holding up the whole show, and uh, Orndorff came in two or three times, and uh, to get him, and then they finally got him up, and it was a shoving match and. Uh, I think Orndorff had the coffee. He spilled the coffee. And Vader did one of those deals. He went to hit him, stepped in the coffee. Boop, boop. <laughs> he went down, boom. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That actually happened to me one time. <laughs> kind of an embarrassing story. <laughs> but what the hell? I, not that I told him any embarrassing story, but back in the old days, Louisiana. I'm in the bathroom, and me and this guy are arguing, you know, and I'm peeing. I mean, well, fuck you, but I start peeing over at him, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and he probably said one too many things. I went to slap him. I stepped in my pee. <laughs> oh, no. I went down. The guy came over. <laughs> Put a couple boots to me right out the door. <laughs> like, son of a bitch. Now you're covered in pee, and you got the that shoes. That in the pee, right? Yeah, go, head hurts. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I love these guys telling stories. There were six of them. I breed them up one by time, one at a time. Big it up, you know. It doesn't always go that way, brother. Not all the time. Yeah, you can't always win, but. Uh... No, she, I remember Terry Gordy to have a drink. <laughs> Did he hit me? <laughs> 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 Fight I back, just, Terry. I just love the <laughs> okay. I just love the idea that somebody pissed you off and you just peed in their direction. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> uh, we were like bikers back then. We were crazy as could be, but I'm glad to survive it. Of course, Doc and Gordy, my two my, my two buddies, man, they they're both gone. God bless them. And Piper, my three three best friends are dead. 
God bless him, man. And uh, we are going to do one more, and it's actually about Piper. Uh, so we'll we'll get your take on this one. So cool. last one for this week, we'll roll the the other ones over. Uh, Jesse asks, Roddy Piper said in a shoot interview that he did not get along with Pat Patterson and implied that Patterson had acted inappropriate inappropriately with him when he was a young guy in the business. Did Roddy ever talk to you about this? Never talked about it. No, nope, didn't discuss it. I knew there was a lot of tension at Legend House, the reality show we did that Pat and Pipe were both at. Excuse me. There was a lot of tension in the beginning, but as long as you were there, it smoothed over. And I think at the end, they, they parted friends. Oh, you know, good. I know Piper, I mean, well, maybe not friends, you know, but uh, no grieving, no big grievance, I don't think. Because yeah, if, if you were together that long and there was that much heat, it would boil over, kind of like with me and Tony. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 but so I don't, I, it's things happen. Of course, they, they, they packed his uh, bagpipes back in the old days, right, when he came into New York. And he yes. thought Pat might have something to do with that. But Pat obviously, you know, made the approach to a lot of guys uh, sexually. But, uh, he never hit on me. I don't know why. You know, I, I got feelings too. Shit. <laughs> why not? Boy, what the hell, Pat? Hi. You know, geez, right? <laughs> and, and he hit on the, the model Rick Martel and, and those guys. <laughs> well, I guess he has a type. Not a big yeah, yeah, type. They got it. Punched him in the nose in the old days. but. <laughs> Well, I don't think we're going to beat that one, Jim. That's going to wrap us up for this Hacksaw Mailbag and our 25th episode. Jim, I love getting 25 to sit down. 25 episodes. Way to go, man. How about that, dude? I love getting to sit down and chat with you. It's always fun and interesting, and I feel like I get a new story every time. So it's, uh, dude, always uh, always such a pleasure. Yeah, thank you, Mark. It's always fun talking to you, my friend. Well, guys, tune in. In two weeks, we'll be back with another one, and we'll see you next time right here. Let's do on- it, brother. Here we go, Let's baby. Start. And if you're going to hold... Hold like you mean it. Oh. Oh. <laughs> See you guys next time. <laughs>